Here we have a cart that weighs 200 pounds and is sitting on the side of a hill and the cart wants to roll down the hill and our question is uh, that we're asked to determine how much force is required to keep this cart from rolling down the hill. This is a very popular example that we see a lot dealing with projections that we've been studying lately. And see, so here's what's going on. We have this, this cart and the gravitational force is directly downwards, but there's going to be another force that's, that's coming into play here that's wanting to let it roll down the hill. And, and what that force is, and you can see it on my diagram here in orange, is it's going to be the projection of that force vector f onto uh, the hill or the, a vector on on this hill with this angle of inclination of 18 degrees here and so really if we can compute the magnitude of this orange vector that's how much force we're going to have to match pushing in the opposite direction to keep it where it is and and not let it roll down the hill because obviously we don't need all 200 pounds uh, of force to to match to keep it from rolling down the hill it's only a portion of that 200 pounds that that depends a lot on the angle of the hill all right so um i, I think really the meat of this problem is determining this orange projection vector if we can do that then then we're we're pretty home free because we just need to take the magnitude of that vector there so i think we need two things to begin with we need to write capital f as a vector now let's do that first before we go any farther f is pointing straight down and it's uh, got a magnitude of 200 pounds so what vector points directly downwards with a magnitude of 200 um, i think capital f would be 0i because it has no left right horizontal component minus 200j and notice I made that negative because it's downwards the other vector that we're gonna need is some vector and it doesn't really matter what direction it goes uh, but it just needs to have an angle of 18 degrees with the horizontal um, it can be either this orange vector here which is fine or I think maybe an easier one to do would just be to do cosine 18i plus sine 18j. Uh, yes, that would be in this direction, but again, that doesn't really matter if all we're looking for is the projection onto that vector. Because once we do a projection, we're not keeping this vector anyways. Uh, we're gonna see where the shadow lands um, you know, once we project it you know, onto, onto this vector here. Um, the, the green vector and the orange vector, they only differ by a scalar, which is gonna be changed with the projection anyway. So I think for uh, our vector V, we'll just call it cosine 18 degrees I plus sine 18 degrees J. We'll just take a nice simple unit vector for, for that, that direction vector there. All right, um, let me get rid of this just so I have a little bit more space to work. Um, here I've copied these vectors again uh, just and took away the drawing just so we can um, talk about this and, and do some math here so what is it that we want well we want the projection of F onto V but but actually we don't even need that really actually all we want is just the magnitude of that projection that's really all we're after and that's going to be the amount of force we're gonna have to push with in the opposite direction here so let, let's see if we can do some of this and some of this uh, i went ahead and jotted down just to speed some things along um, here's the formula for the projection just to remind you one more time just so we have this handy all right so let's let's see if we can find these things the projection of f onto v is just going to be some scalar multiple of v so let's let's find the scalar here all right first up let's do f dot v so we'll have zero times cosine 18 plus negative 200 times sine 18. Now the zero times cosine is zero. That, that wipes away because zero times anything is zero. But what we will have negative 200 times sine of 18 degrees. Um, and remember with the dot product, you get a scalar. So we're not gonna have I's and J's in this dot product. Um, to save a little time, I went ahead and computed negative 200 times sine of 18 on my calculator. I got negative 61.8. Just make sure your calculator is in degree mode when you, when you do that. All right, so for our projection formula, 
the projection of F onto V, we would have a scalar of uh, negative 61.8 divided by the magnitude of V squared. Now this, this is really nice. V is a unit vector. Remember cosine 18 I plus sine 18 J? That's on the unit circle. So it has a magnitude of one. So we're really dividing by one squared. So actually, I'll tell you what, let me, let me just write this a little bit larger then because it's just going to be negative 61.8 period because it's divided by 1 times, I'm kind of running out of space, so I'm going to switch this vector v to component form just to squinch it in here a little bit, uh, times cosine 18 comma sine 18. All right. Um, I need this guy's magnitude. If I can have his magnitude, we're done. Because what, what I just discovered here, what this vector is, this was that orange vector that we were talking about uh, earlier, wherever it was. Remember this orange vector right here? Um, that's the vector we just found. That's the projection of F onto vector V. That negative 61.8 times uh, cosine 18i plus sine 18j. That's, that's this guy right here. So now really all I want to do is find his magnitude because the question is asking how much force, like what's the quantity of force that I would have to push in this direction to match that force that's pointing downhill. All right, now we're going to do a little bit of a shortcut here. Um, to get the magnitude, to get this guy's magnitude right here, the magnitude of the projection, which would be the magnitude of all this stuff, Notice this guy right here is a scalar, and scalars are allowed to be moved outside of a norm. Um, the reason for that is pretty straightforward. If you have, let's say, double the length of a vector, you're going to scale a vector by two. It doesn't matter if you find the magnitude of the vector and then double that answer, or double the components of the vector and then find the magnitude. The order doesn't really matter. So we can pull the scalar outside, outside the norm. Um, it will be positive. It will be positive 61.8 um, because distance or magnitude or length is not negative. And then we'll just have the magnitude of cosine 18 comma sine 18. But check this out, cosine 18 comma sine 18, that's a unit vector, which will have magnitude one so we'll get 61.8. That's the length or the magnitude, that's the amount of force that this cart is pushing with going down the hill, which means that's the amount of force we need to push back with to keep it stationary. So the answer would be 61.8 pounds of force. We didn't need all 200 because it was just sitting on a hill. We weren't carrying the cart. We just had to hold it up on the hill. The cart is pushing down with 61.8 pounds of force. So we have to match that by pushing upwards with 61.8 pounds of force. So this is a very typical example. You probably find this one in your textbook that deals with uh, an application of projections.